Carrie Bradshaw is one of TV's most iconic characters, but what about the woman who created her? Candice Bushnell based the character on her alter ego. In the show, Carrie, of course, writes about her friends' love lives. Some people at the time found the explicitness of mm -hmm. scenes like this one scandalous, but others celebrated it for pioneering women. Oh. And just like that, the woman behind Carrie Bradshaw, Candice Bushnell, is here in the studio. Good morning to you. Good morning. I, can't, I mean, that. I remember Sex and the City starting, being in the back of a taxi cab, and some of my colleagues talking about it, thinking, goodness me, what is this show that they've all got really excited about? Yes. It sort of massively shifted the sort of the, 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 the landscape for a show that had women talking so openly mm -hmm. about what they wanted, what they liked doing. Sex and dating. Yes, yes. Well, it's, you know, all of Sex and the City is really comes so much out of my life. And it's so interesting doing this show, True Tales of Sex, Success and Sex in the City, which is my stage show, which started off Broadway in New York. Mm -hmm. it, so it's really the origin story of Sex in the City. It's how I created Sex in the City, how hard I worked to get there, why I invented Carrie Bradshaw and what happened to me afterward. And along the way, I answer some of the questions that I've been asked the most, like, was there a real Mr. Big? Like, in that clip, that's not actually how we met. If you come to the show, you'll find out the real story. So you didn't actually the real spill Mr. Big. your handbag and a whole load of condoms fall across uh, the pavement? No, no. And I actually met him in a much more interesting way oh. during Fashion Week. And... Um, and then I also talk about my Samantha, Miranda, and Charlotte. Mm. And I did have three friends, like the ones on the TV show. I actually had many, many girlfriends. And of course, it's mixed in with my life story of how I came to New York, which is really a classic story of a young woman coming to New York to make it. Thrown in with a couple of naughty sex stories. like. Pretty naughty. I'm in. I have to say. <laughs> One of them is about a threesome. Wow. So already from an early age. You were adventurous. I was I was writing about sex. Crikey. Yes. Um, I uh, was lucky enough to interview a number of the cast, particularly Kim Cattrall, many, many years ago. And I think one of the things that... Every, what I loved about this series and talking to my friends was my, my female friends would say, who are you? Are you a Carrie? Are you Miranda? Are you Charlotte? Mm. Are you Samantha? And no one wanted to admit they were Samantha, but they always used to accuse each other of being Samantha. There well, was something about Samantha that was so fabulously brilliant. Liberated. Um, totally liberated. Well, liberated. So, the reality is that most of my friends, in some ways, were like Samantha. It was a very... I was writing about a very liberated time um, sexually for women in the 90s, and that was really what inspired me to write Sex in the City, was that women were actually had all kinds of dating adventures and and really talked about it in quite a body way, which I mm. suppose seems shocking. But I, I have to say that after the show aired, when I came to England, I remember going to a club, China White, was that yeah, the club? that was big for a while. Yes, so that was big for a while. And I was taken aside by a very posh, young man who was all up in arms about sex in the city because he said, you're ruining ruining it for men like me oh. because now women have our number <laughs> and we can't get away with what we got away with before. Yeah. So I thought, yes, that's exactly the whole point of doing this. What is it like dating for you now as that the person who has, you know, you know what men are like, you won't put up well, with certain I, things? I, I, well, I've been dating for a, a long time. I was married for 10 years and I got divorced in my 50s. And I actually ended up writing a book called Is There Still Sex in the City? Yeah. Uh, which is maybe going to be the loose basis of a reality show that I'm hoping to work on about women dating over 50, you know, in their 50s and mm. 60s, because that's really, it's a really growing demographic, Very but it's, it's untapped. And so I do talk about some of the differences of dating 
now. And one of the realities is that it's a lot harder now mm. for everybody. It really does not matter what age you are. Why is that, though, you do you are. think, Candice? Well, it's, it's internet dating. Okay. And there are... Has it just made it too easy? So if you're having a few issues with someone, you can go, oh, do you know what, I'm going to look for somebody well, else. You know, there's that aspect. And then there's also the aspect that people have so many other things to do besides dating. Uh, you know, before we had our cell phones, what were we you know, doing with our friends? Time. <laughs> there was sex. There were relationships. Now everybody is absorbed on their phones mm. with social media. And also, you know, the reality is that dating apps are a form of entertainment. Yeah. And, I, and I'm guilty of it too. I'm on a couple of dating apps. Are and, you? you know, if I'm in this salon, I'm a little bored. I'm like, I'll just swipe through and mm -hmm. see who's around. Um, and, you know, men do the same thing. Is it true you once dated in one week a 21 year old and a 91 year old? Yes, that, that is true. And that's one of the big differences uh, of dating now. At one time, we were, you were pretty much restricted to your peer group, in a sense. Yeah. So it was going to be somebody who was a couple of years older, yeah. maybe a couple of years younger. But now, because of internet dating, you can kind of plug in whatever you want. Yeah. And well, there's different sites for different tastes as well. Right? Yes, there are different sites for different tastes. But also, there's a much bigger age range. Did you go um, on second dates with either the 21 or the 91 year old? Well, the 91 year old was a little bit, you know, in my world. So, you know, I would run into him. And, and the 21 year old, you know, I went out with him a couple of times. Mm. But it was really just research. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, you know, okay. That's there we my go. That's feeling. Research. I mean, yeah. I, okay. I suppose I like it, you know, it was a date. We went to dinner. He's, but I was like, this Candace, is not for real. Can we ask you one quick question? And I know we're really out of time and they're shouting in our yeah. ear, but we've got a debate later on as to whether going to a strip club is cheating. A, a French stripper has turned around. She, she believes men being at a strip club, they are cheating on their partners. Mm. Do you think going to a strip club is cheating? Oh, it feels like I you mean, have... I've gone to strip clubs in the past. Um, it, it really depends on what you do. Okay, so it's the activity the at the strip club. club. If you're just looking, it's not cheating. I, yeah, if you're just looking, it's probably, probably not really cheating. And, Bit of window shopping. Uh, and, yeah, Hopefully you're not even like window cheating. shopping. Exactly. Then it borders oh, in do you like, so cheating. you don't window shop? No. Okay. But, but what do you mean by window exactly. shopping? Window shopping implies you're going to buy something. Exactly, well, Candice. Well, if you're a strip club, is that, you know, the, by the dance. OK. We've got that oh. debate coming up at 8.45. Unfortunately, we do have to go to the weather forecast now as we all get a little hot under the collar. Uh, but Candice, thank you so much. Your show's going to be at the London Palladium on the 7th of February, but you're going around the country between the 2nd and the 16th, all over the country as well. Candice, lovely to meet you. True tales of sex, success and sex in the city. Lovely to meet you. Thank you so much.